It works! I actually remembered how to do it! Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Modded Minecraft, and this is really noisy, so I'm not going to do that there. But if you haven't seen this machine before, this is my automated mycelium replacer thingy me jig. I need to come up with a better name, but you know, it does the job. So, we're on a mushroom island, and as you can see, we have a lot of grass around here. So what I have is two setups like this, very similar. This one is digging up the grass and replacing it with dirt. And then we have another one at the other side of the island that is doing a similar thing, but this is actually digging up the mycelium and replacing it with the grass. And the grass is being sent over from that other one by these quantum entangler porters, going straight into the machine and doing its thing. And then the dirt that this one digs up gets sent back in another quantum entangler porter over to the other one. So it is a fully enclosed system, but the problem is this can't do the whole island on its own, which you wouldn't expect it to because that's really overpowered. So I do have to move this one around every now and then. And because it's been such a long time that I've been in this world, I wasn't sure I'd remember how to do it. But I did it and it works. So I'm very happy with that. All right, so it has been a very long time. And I am sorry for that. I didn't actually realise how long it had been until someone told me the day. It had been seven months since I posted a video from this world. Seven months. That's ridiculous. And there are a few reasons for that. But mainly it's because I was a little bit uninspired by what we've got going on here. I'm loving all the machines and all the technology we've got on all the different levels. Made quite a lot of progress. But look at it. It, it just looks horrible. And the reason for that is because we don't have any mods that actually add blocks in that we can use for different building techniques. We have stuff like this, but this is all machinery. So what I've done to remedy that is actually adding another mod that I was going to add in when I first created this pack, but it wasn't available at the time. And that is the chisel mod. So if you just have a look, this thing here, this adds absolutely tons of blocks. So I've got eight pages and most of this is blocks. So if you don't know what this is, don't worry, because we're going to have a quick overview of the chisel mod right now. Okay, so the chisel mod gives us lots of new blocks to play with, but it also lets us use the existing blocks in different ways by adding different patterns to them. So we do that with these tools up here. So I've already crafted the diamond one, so we're just going to do the iron one so we can see the difference. And this is just a stick and one iron ingot. Okay, so just like that, and that's how we do that. And it's the same for the diamond one, it's just one diamond and one stick. So, if we just have a look at this thing, let's grab a stack of cobble. Because cobble, obviously, a very early game material, and it's not something in vanilla you want to use that much. But, with chisel, you can turn it into lots of different things. So, let's try that with, firstly, with the iron chisel. Right, so, we have this interface, and we have this space up here where we can put the blocks that can be chiseled. So, if we just shift-click that into there, we get all of these options. So, all we need to do is find the one that we like, and click on it and it'll give us a full stack of that. So I'm just going to pick, let's do the indent one. I quite like that one. So as you can see, that did use durability as well. So it uses one for each block that you use and we only have 500 total there. So you can't do a lot with the iron one, but the diamond one does have a lot more as you can see there. We have 4096 uses on a full one of those. If we just put these down, these are all connected textures as well. So they do look really cool. And remember, this is just cobblestone, which is absolutely brilliant. So the other way we can use the iron chisel, when it's got nothing in it, like this, if we just left click on any of these, it will cycle through all of the different versions of cobblestone. As you can see, there's lots of different ones we can use, but this is a little bit random and you don't tend to use it this way. So if we just pick one of these up, go back into here, and if we select one that we want, let's say the wide bricks, put that in there, and then we'll put it into this one and then leave it there. So if we come out of that interface, that is still in there. So if we just click on it again, we can see it's still there. But what we can do now, because that one's in there, we know that that's the pattern we want. We can just left click on anything that's cobble, and it doesn't matter which state it's in, it'll change it into that one. So that is a really good way of using it. That's the way I like to use it if I've already got something laid down that I want to change. But I tend to just craft them into blocks like this and just place them manually normally. The diamond chisel is pretty much the same. It has a very similar interface. We can still put blocks in there and just take them out like that. But you also have these little things down here as well. So we have four options for how we can change the blocks that are in the world. This only really applies for when we're using this version of it, where we have something in there like that. So if we leave it on single block, it works exactly the same way as the iron one. So what we can also do, if we click on panel, this will do a three by three. So if we go like that, it'll do everything in a three by three area. Let's change it to another one. Let's do that. And if we do that again, we get a three by three. And then the other one's fairly self-explanatory. We can do a column or a row. Now, I've 
Not sure if these are vertical or not, because I don't use this feature very often. So let's give this a try. Let's go. Let's have a different one. So what does this do? Yeah, so that does a roll like that. Yeah, so it pretty much does the same thing when it's laid down like this. I'm, I'm assuming if they stood up, it'll, it would do something different. Okay, so that is how that version works. So it's pretty much the same thing. You tend to just craft the blocks and place them manually. But we also have two other tools that we can use. And also a block as well. So let's do this one first. So if we go back in here, what I want to craft is this thing. It's called the eye chisel. So, oh, do I need a full one for that? Can I... Right, so it needs to be full durability. So let's craft another one of these. And then we should be able to do that now. Yeah, there we go. Right, so eye chisel, very similar. But if we click on this, you can see this is a little bit different now. So if we shift click on the cobblestone we've got there, it doesn't actually move from the inventory, but it is highlighted blue now so we can see that it's selected. Okay, so when we click one of them up here, we actually get a preview that we can actually left click and drag this around just so we can see how it looks. Because some of them are connected textures, we can see how it looks and how it's gonna look in the world. And then if we want to chisel them, all we do is we just click chisel on there if we just want the one, or if we hold down shift, it changes the chisel all, and then we just left click and it changes them directly in the inventory into the new type that we wanted. So down here, we have the four options that we had before with the damn chisel, but we also have this new one called contiguous and contiguous 2D. And uh, what this does, this is even crazier. So we need to place a three dimensional thing here. So let's just, no, do that. Let's just place a few blocks like this. Because what this can do is actually do, rather than just having them in a panel, it can do a lot more than that. So we need to change to a different one. So let's go with that. Let's do the weathered bricks this time. I love this one. All right. So if we are go back into the chisel and click on contiguous, if we click on this, Okay, so I've just looked this up, and unfortunately, the contiguous modes of the eye chisel don't work in the 1.16.5 version. So what it's supposed to do is basically change all of the blocks that you click on with the one that you've got selected in your chisel. But it doesn't work, unfortunately, in this version. But I don't tend to use it anyway. As I say, I usually just craft them up and place them manually. So that's the basics of how the normal chisels work. So there are a couple of things we can look at. But before we do that, we'll have a look at some of the blocks that chisel adds. Okay, so the blocks that we can craft with chisel, I like to think of as being in three categories. So we've got like the regular vanilla stuff that is normal blocks, like the cobblestone we've just looked at, and we also have andesite up here, you can do stone, we've got bricks here as well, you can also do charcoal, coal, pretty much all the vanilla blocks you can do something with. Glowstone is a really interesting one, you can do all these patterns with glowstone, and we also, these are really interesting as well, all the planks the vanilla planks, you can use these and put all the different patterns on. Quartz as well, loads of different patterns for that. So that is the first category, just the normal vanilla block. The second one is the new stuff that you can craft from normal vanilla items. So, right, so we've got the factory blocks here. So this is a fairly simple craft and they're actually quite cost effective as well. So for four of any stone variant and four writing, you get 32 blocks of these factory blocks. And these are my absolute favorite, all of these things. So let's, let's just get a couple of stacks. Okay, so with these, this for me is the look of modded Minecraft. When I first start, when I first started watching people's videos playing modded, it was factory blocks that I noticed as like the thing that everyone used. So this this one in particular, the, people use these all the time on the edge of stuff, and just like in front of machines as like a hazard line, it's great. There's some you can do some really cool stuff with factory blocks, and I really like them. And the f one I use for the floor quite a lot, I think it's this one, the wireframe. No, that's not right, is it? That's the, I think it's a, like a blacker version of that. That one. I think that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one I like to use. So we'll probably be using that somewhere around here. I love this block. What else? So we've got the factory blocks. We've got the laboratory blocks, which are really cool for like a laboratory, I suppose. So if you're doing some like kind of like high tech, like clean look, it's just stone around quartz and you get this art. These are as cost effective. You only get eight blocks for these, but there's a lot of different variants like a lot of these look like steel grits and pipes and stuff, and you've got a few different variations and some very cool stuff. We also have Tyrion. I've never used this one, but this is quite a cool block as well. This is just iron and stone, and for this one, yeah, this one's quite good. You get 32 for this. Well, let's just grab some of these. Let's get a stack of those. And you can do quite a few different things with this. I quite like this one. If you want to do some like darker colours in the walls or something, we'll, we'll probably use that for something. 
We also have these Futura blocks. This is another one. This this is redstone and stone. This is like the applied energistics controller, which is a really cool one to have if you're using a. But as we've got refined storage in this one, doesn't really make much sense. And it's just some other like crazy stuff in there. There did used to be a few more variations as well. But I think that's all I've got for now. Apart from the anti-block, this is a crazy thing. This is glowstone and stone. And this is just like solid colours. So that's the second category, the stuff that you can craft. And the third one is the new blocks that Chisel adds into the world. So there's three. There's basalt. There is marble, which is this one here. And then there's also limestone, which is quite similar to sandstone. But it, it's just like, it's a little bit greener, I suppose. Yeah, well, that, that's a really cool block, and you'll you'll find big patches of all three of these in the world. So I actually want to go get some of this now because I want to use some basalt, but basalt can be quite tricky. Okay, so the first problem we have to tackle is that basalt is generated by chisel, but because everything we've done so far has been without the chisel mod, all the chunks below us won't have any basalt in it. So we need to go a little bit further away, and I have been somewhere, and I think I've found something. So this island here, I have dug down and there was some basalt down there. So this is definitely new chunks. We can go down there and get some basalt. The second problem is basalt generates around lava lakes. So it's below and to the side of them. So harvesting it can be a bit of a pain when it's covered in lava. So I've come up with this real elaborate idea for getting rid of the lava. So mining the basalt would be nice and easy, which I don't actually need to do. I, after I've designed it all, I realised there was a much easier way of doing it. But we'll do it anyway. So I've got myself an electric pump, which... By this stage in the game, we would have used it a lot already, but because I've been using the kitchen sink from cooking with blockheads, I haven't actually crafted one of these yet. So the recipe, very simple, all just standard mechanism stuff, steel casing, infused alloys, and osmium ingots, and a bucket. And what we can do with this is put it over any liquid, and it will basically extract it all and put it into a tank through these pipes. And we can also add the energy and speed upgrades to it, so I've grabbed a stack each of those. And then I've also grabbed two quantum entangle porters because what I want to do, because we have the fluid grid over here and I do have quite a lot of storage for fluid and I'm not using much of it at all, I'm going to send all the lava back with the quantum entangle porter just to fill this up and then, we, then we'll have a supply of lava we can have at any point. We don't have to go down into the caves to get it. So I was going to get an energy cube as well, but because I've got this, I believe I'm still sending energy through this. So let's just come down here see if that is still the case. Do I have one attached to this anywhere? Uh, yeah, there we go. So that is receiving power. So I should be able to just put this down somewhere and use it to send send the power as well. So that's good. Right, so I think that... Should we take... Let's take a tank as well, just as a temporary thing. Oh, can I do the better one? Can we craft these yet? No. Oh, no, is that not empty? Yes. What, what's your problem? In there. Alright, let's get the let's get the top one. Have that as well. I don't know why it doesn't do that. But alright, we'll take that. And the other thing I need, which makes all of this I'm doing here redundant, is a digital miner, obviously, because I don't even need to get rid of the lab if I use this, do I? So let's just craft up one of these and we'll take this over. And we can do exactly the same thing. So we'll get some logistical transporters as well. Let's grab those. And I think they should do us. Do we have any teleporters? Should we do that? That might make sense as well. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we can set up a, an easy way of getting back and forth. Because we have this one here. Yeah, let's do that. Right, I'm going to fly over there. And with the mechanism jetpack, this not that quick. So having this set up will be good. Right, so I'll get over there. And we'll get this set up. Okay, so looking at the map, I am quite far away from home now. But we're down at Y11 and found a lava lake. And this is the stuff I'm after, basalt. So let's have a go at setting up this pump. See if we can get this working properly. So we need to have this over the lava itself. So if we just put a block on the side like that. I'm not sure the range. I think it'll get everything that it's connected to. So let's try that. That was a really, really bad placement. Why did I do it like that? Right. So what I need is the power to go into there. So what we can do, if we set up a quantum entangle portal there, is that that's not getting it right. So I need to make sure that the power... Oh no, I need to set the frequency first. Die. So let's... Main, set. And then if we go on the side config and click on energy, put that on eject, and turn all these to output, because not going to be any power going into that. Right, so as you can see now, that is working. The pump, because it's powered, it is sucking up the lava out of there. Uh, what we can do as well, we can go in there and put the speed upgrades in. So if we just click that in there. And these all go in at once now, which is great, because they used to go in one by one. 
But I'm happy with that. That's way better. So this is now full. So it needs somewhere to go. So what I'm going to do is put a mechanical pipe on top. Like that. And then that pipe will be filling up a lava as well. Yeah. That is actually doing quite well, isn't it? So let's put that there. And then we'll put that down like that. And that should fill up there. Now is that going to get that down there or is that too low? No, it appears to be going. That is doing very well. And how's that doing? Yeah, it's actually got everything out there. That is absolutely brilliant. So I now want to be able to send this over to my the mushroom island. So we'll take the pipe again. I will connect that up to this. I could have just done this straight into there, but you know, it's nice to have a little buffer. So we'll do that like that. And we'll set this to pull. Not like that. Like that. So that is now sending it into there. Now has it got any lava in it? No, it hasn't. So we need to make sure that the side config for fluids is on input. It is on input anyway. It's probably that one, isn't it? Right, yeah. So that's coming out of there now. You can see that's got lava in it. So all we need to do now is set up another quantum entangle porter. Actually, I brought an anchor upgrade as well. So what this will do is keep this machine chunk loaded. So if we look at the chunks, yeah, that's perfect. So we don't need to do this now because the lava is already gone. It's been that efficient. So we just need to go back and set that up and we should be good so what i can do hopefully is set up this teleport frame actually should we get rid of all of this first should we man out this basalt uh, do, do i have i have a vein man i think on this die should we do that vein all right let's do that stand up here just in case there's any more lava below oh doesn't that work doesn't work on basalt never mind all right i'll get rid of all this and then we'll set up the teleporter okay so we've got rid of all that now and we've got exactly five stacks from that just notice a couple more pieces down there so i will grab that but now i need to do the teleporter but the problem is i forgot to bring any energy cables so i'm gonna have to connect it directly to this quantum entangle porter and then we can redo it again later I need to refresh my memory how these things work i always forget so let's stick that on there that's powered now i need to set oh is it mushroom base up to that and i think i just need to put these like around it yeah let, let's go with that so we'll just dig up here a little bit get us enough space and then it should i don't know if you need to like power it after you've set this up properly but let, let's just give it a go see what happens so i need to go like too high and i think i've got the exact number oh one shot no that's really annoying can i do it like that does that work no, no, from, oh, I haven't got another one. Right. The good news is I can get back easily. I'll just need to fly over here again to set this up. I can't believe I'm one shot. That's so annoying. All right, let's go home. No, hang on. It sent me to this one. That's right. All right. <laughs> right, okay. Let's get rid of that. Oh, where are we? So I want to go to Mushroom Base, Teleport. Right. So that sent me home. Now I just need to get another portal for him. And then fly back over there. So I'll get this done. No, I'm not. So we'll get these. Hopefully I've got enough. Yeah, I've got enough. Right, so we'll get over there and try this again. Actually, while we're over here, we can actually set up this quantum entangle portal to receive the lava, can't we? So do I need... Actually, do I need another one? Can I just use the one that's down here? And as long as I've got a refined storage cable somewhere... Uh, actually, there is one there. Right, if I break that up. I could take it out of the top of here. I just need to have... Is it an importer? Yeah. So, right. Let me get that. We'll give this a go. Okay. So, I've crafted up another tank as well. So, we'll just have this go straight into there. Can I just click that like that? No, not you. Put that there. And then go into this. That is set to... Main, isn't it? Yeah. So, we just need to go into the side config. Set the fluid to... Output on the top and auto eject on. So now the lava is coming to there. That's great. Right, so now I want to take the importer, put that on there, and then if we connect this cable, now this is a little bit messy, but if we just connect this over here like this, we should now have that. Oh, that should, I think I need a bucket first, I to tell it that I want to import lava. Right, let me grab that. Oh no, is there a thing? Oh, it's, that's it, isn't it? Right. Change that to fluids on the side there. Click that in there so it's now importing lava. Oh, is it doing it? Why are you not working? 
No, mod, whitelist. There we go. That seems to be going down. Right, okay. I think that's working now. So if we go up to the refined storage system, we should see lava in the food grid. Yes, there we go. So I've got 38 buckets of lava and that's still coming in. So everything that was backed up over there will be transferring to that tank down there and then imported into here. Right, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted to get set up. Right, now I want to do this thing. If I got... Oh, is that what I did wrong? No. I was just checking that these blocks here were connected to this one and the are. So yeah, we do need nine to do the whole thing. So that's why we couldn't do them before. Right, I'm going to fly back over there. And we'll give that another go. Not forgetting our power cables, obviously. Then we can move it. Okay, so we're now back over at the island. And I've been down to the bottom where that lava lake was. And I've removed all the pump and the tank and everything. And we're just going to set up the teleporter up here. That was wrong. So let's go there. And then we need one, two, three. Two, three. Right. That should count as having a frame. Right, it's got no link. But that's alright. We just need to power it. Oh, no rain. Go away. Put that there. Energy, I'll put it on all sides. Right, so that's okay. Now, so I set this to mushroom base. We now have two of them that are defined as mushroom base. So if I go through here, I should just go back. There we go. Have a sleep. And then when I go back through this way, we should end up on the island. Brilliant. Right, that's what exactly what I want to see. Now, can I put a chunk? Yes, I can put that in here. So, oh, where is it? Actually, do I have... Where did I put that anchor up upgrade? I can't remember now. Oh, it's in there. Right, that's the same thing. I can leave it in there. That's fine. Right. Okay, let's set up a digital miner and start getting some salt. Because that's way easier than that convoluted way I came up with. So, let's just pull that there. Got our... Where's the cables? There we go. Right. Those there. Oh, that's not got any power at the minute. So, do that. That's fully powered. And we'll set config... New filter, uh, item stack, you, 0 to 16, what's the max, max is 32 isn't it, so let's do that, that on, I don't want to touch on, don't want to pull on, but I do want auto eject on, so let's do that, and then we can run a, I didn't need the other, yeah, right, okay, I've got my item cables as well, so I can take that out of there, and run that, actually, let's just, let's get it going first, right, so that's mining, very slowly, so I took the speed upgrades out of that pump as well, so we can actually put these in here. So let's do that. And energy as well. Right, so you're going a little bit faster now. Right, so I'm going to get 1500 out of this, so very happy with that. Okay, you go in there, and then I can also set this to send items. So, sides, and we're on items. And everything is set to input so that should work if i just need to configure this to pull i believe no no why is that not working auto eject is on it comes out of the... does it need to go into a chest first that's really annoying if it is all right i've got some wood let's do this all right you and you now i think if i put that there that should start up. right yeah that so why are you not connecting what is wrong with this because that's the wrong pipe, that's why. Alright, I might not need the chest, but we'll leave it there anyway. Logistical transporter, that's what we want. Right, you go like that. You're connected to there. Set that to pull. Right, and you can see that is really fast because it's the fastest cables, but that is going into there. Oh, I don't know where those items are going, so I suppose we should get back over to the base and figure out where they're going. Right, so they're probably going into the one where the lava's going, aren't they? So, where's that? No, they're not. Where, where are they going? Have I got? Have I already got one set up for items? I, I, this is what I mean. I've been on this well for absolutely ages. So I don't know what's going on. Right, it's not going into there. Eh, uh, all right. No, now I'm really confused. Not down here. Anything? No, I don't think there's anything here. No. Okay, confused. No. I know where it's going, and that is a massive problem, so I need to stop that. Before I explain it, let's let's just... Right, you... Don't do that. You, you stay there. Right, that's piling up. All right, we can live with that for now. Right, this one, I need to set a new frequency, so let's call it basalt. 
Yeah, so that is set to salt. Right, that's good. So once it comes through here, where it was going is that main frequency I used to do this grass and debt, which we had a look at at the beginning. So one of these is probably going to have basalt in it, which I was thinking might cause a problem. It might try and place the basalt in place of the grass or the dirt. So where's it? It's not in that one. So it would have come through. Uh, oh no, actually it would have been sent to the other one, wouldn't it? Yeah, because the dirt is on a separate one. The dirt gets sent to that one on a different channel. So the basalt should have been going through to this one. Hopefully it hasn't been placed everywhere because that'd be really annoying. I don't think it will look because I think this is finished now and needs moving again. Okay, so hopefully the basalt is in here. Yeah, there is. Right, so I've changed that now. If I change that other one where the lava was coming through, which is only used for the basalt now, if I change that to the basalt channel, that should work. Right, so if I change this to basalt, and I need to get rid of this as well, though I see it's not fluid anymore. It's going to be items. Right, you get out. We'll have the Importer directly on there this time and then just another cable. I think that should be good. So we just need to go Get that chest to pump it into the quantum entangle portal again, and that should be all right What I'm messing about. I'll take the basalt with me. You can send it all through again Down there Stick all that in there And where's my configurator? You like that all Right, so that's all going through again. Let's go see what's happening. Right, so the basalt should actually be coming straight through into here now. It is not. Right, what's going on? Oh, I might need a whitelist item. Let's let's grab that. And do you have anything? Oh, you don't. What's going on? Okay, that's not sending them now for some reason. What's happening there? Maybe I need a chest on the other end. So let's try that. Right, so if we just put a chest there. I need to set the. Oh, it might be the sides. Oh, is it the sides again? I need it. Alright. Top. I'll put. Jerked it off. Why do we always forget that? Right. You go away. Import it. And ah, that's working. Right. I need some speed upgrades on there, but that is alright. So if I go back up here, that should be importing the basalt. Automatically and I don't even need to do anything. Right. That is brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay So with that I am actually gonna leave it there I know we haven't got an absolute ton done today But we've had a good look at the chisel mod being re-inspired by the blocks that we've got in there So I might do a little bit of building between episodes and try and get something done around here But don't worry I will explain everything I've done and then we also managed to get the basalt automated as well So we'll leave that running and then I can do a few bits for that Hopefully make this place look a bit pretty and make me feel happier about playing in it If you have enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.